So we're here at the Linaro Connect, and uh, who are you? Hi, my name is Thea Aldrich, and I'm the developer evangelist and advocate for the Zephyr project. So, um, Zephyr is pretty cool, right? Yes. So, uh, is it the future of IoT? You know, I think it would, that's a, that's a hard question. Um, I think, you know, predictions are, are always difficult. I think that Zephyr has a really great opportunity to have a profound impact on the IoT ecosystem. Um, so I would say I certainly hope and expect that it will be a, a large part of the future of IoT. And already a lot of companies are collaborating. For example, Intel and ARM are collaborating and a whole bunch of other companies. And uh, they're working very hard, right? Some things, for example, right here behind, uh, we had the Linaro Connect and there's some collaboration going on. Yeah, so we're, it's really exciting time within the Zephyr community. All of the, the indicators of community growth are really strong. Um, we're up to about 325 contributors from more than 15 companies. Um, and so while the project is still relatively young within the RTOS space, when you look at the number of developers, the number of companies, and the number of outside organizations that are using and contributing to Zephyr in unique and interesting ways, it's a, it's a really exciting part project to be part of right now. So uh, have you, you you've, uh, you've uh, um, what's it called, uh, promoted, uh, ev evangelized uh, open, open collaborative mm -hmm. projects before, mm -hmm. right? So how, how does uh, Zephyr, uh, what's it called, how is it special? So one of the things that I love about the Zephyr project, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, of brand new, mind-blowing innovations that are going to happen in the art toss space. What is a, what is unique about the Zephyr project is really the implementation of best practices for open source that that's letting the project see the full benefit of the collaboration of having so many different voices and so many different perspectives at the table. So um, it's it's kind of the Linux for the embedded world. So it's it, right. Is that kind of the positioning right here? Um, so well, I, th I think it's always important to to distinguish um, when people say that we're the you know the Linux of the embedded world. We're actually not based off of Linux. Um, we're specifically targeting places where Linux is too big. Um, so you know, embedded and IoT are such generic terms that I think that for Zephyr, we're really hyper focused on on being the the RTOS of choice when a Linux is too big. Uh, but it's it's got to have a whole bunch of things that people are saying that takes all the boxes because people are getting excited and, and totally involved in it. So there's got to be something that's really happening that's the right thing. I think so, um, and I think a lot of it really centers back to to things like governance um, under the Linux Foundation, but also the strength and commitment of our members and the developers working on it. You know, open source projects are always only as strong as their communities, and so any success for Zephyr is really a direct result of the work of the community. So uh, what kind of work do you do in, in evangelizing it? So are you going to some events? Yeah, so I, I have a the honor of being the evangelist for the Zephyr project and, and I came to the Zephyr project as a user, as a hobbyist. Um, and so the idea that there was even room for non-technical contributions to be really seriously valued was such a benefit to me. And so we do a number of speaking and promotional events, but we also are, you know, a large part of my job is going out and talking directly to the developers, finding out what they're worried about, what they're interested in, and making sure that in the larger meetings and in the strategic decision making, every sing de single developer's voice is heard and there are opportunities for their work to be promoted and for them, the, the community, to actually share in the value. So uh, what kind of events, for example? Do you have some uh, examples you can mention? Sure, so we're going to be at ELCE um, coming up in October and we also have a Zephyr Hackathon there that I'm really excited about. Um, unfortunately, it's already been sold out, um, but we do have a waiting list and I want to encourage everybody who is, is at the conference to please, uh, uh, you know, at least try to attend. We're going to accommodate as many people as we can, but, but like you said, it's, it's such a, a hot project right now that we're really having a lot of demand. 
And then there will be a whole bunch more just after that, I'm sure. Like yes, we were, we're working on some contests so we can actually find ways for people to participate from the comfort of their home or from wherever they are so they don't have to, you know, get on an airplane and fly across the world to participate in an event. They can participate in event and, and contribute straight from their house. So uh, what are some examples of some of the demands that developers have, maybe? So, you know, it's it's really interesting you say that we were just finished up our first developer survey where we had a chance to, to sit down and really talk with not just the core contributors and the maintainers, but the regular folks contributing to the project. Um, we're seeing a lot of excitement about adding more safety and security features, right? The, the safety uh, critical applications are, are crucial for us to really, really um, be, be proactive about. And so the developers are really interested in that. They're interested in long-term support because there's a, a huge market of products coming out that are powered by Zephyr that we're going, you know, while we're already seeing it now, long-term support is, is certainly something that, that can be expected to increase that. Um, and we're also seeing, you know, about half of our developers are engaging with Zephyr in terminal, but we've got a large contingent that want to see tighter integration with IDEs, different tool chains, etc. So there's a, a growing a community of uh, SOCs that are supported and uh, companies that are joining and supporting it? Yes, so we have, um, I believe it's something like over 110 supported boards right now. And that on, on all of the major architectures. So that was for me when I was looking at the Zephyr project and trying to decide like where am I going to professionally invest my time and energy. It was the, the diversity in the technology that supported with its effort that really drew me to it. And I think it's one of the places that, that we shine the strongest is, you know, there's a lot of, of RTOSs out there that have a lot of supported boards, but the speed in which our community is able to put um, to put things out is is really unmatched right now. So there's companies like uh, ARM and Intel, but oh, many other companies. But uh, does does Zephyr the Zephyr project have some kind of funding funds that it can be used to? Are you uh, hiring developers, or is it each of the companies assigning them to the project? So. There's a variety of different ways that organizations engage with the Zephyr project. We have some companies that, you know, participate through their membership and, and um, you know, whatever level of membership they, they choose, it's, um, I believe you have to be a member of the Linux Foundation and then you join the Zephyr project. Um, but we also have a number of companies and a number of organizations and individuals that are able to contribute in, in non-financial ways, right? So companies do put their developers on the projects. Um, but we're also starting to see a lot of excitement within the universities where or companies that maybe are not yet members, and I, I say yet, of, of the Zephyr project are starting to say, you know what, we do have five interns. We'd really like to get them started experimenting, hooking up our platform to Zephyr. And so we're starting to see more and more um, diversity in the types of contributions that, com that our member companies are making. So are you able to uh, you have a system where you can say, ah, we'd like some help here, 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 and they kind of join, and, and do you have like some, some uh, to-do lists, and they can just fill out and do what they want, or um, what they can? You know, so, so the, the great thing about Zephyr is, yeah, you can be completely empowered to go off and build on your own and, and to promote the, the organization on your own. However, all, one of the, the nice things about the transparency within the Zephyr community is that all of our planning is open. And so all you have to do is go to the Zephyr GitHub and look at the technical roadmap, look at the issues, join the calls. There's, there's so many different ways for developers and companies to find out how to plug in that you know, they're able to say, you know what, I can't do this, but I can do that. And it ends up you get the, you allow experts to be the experts in their given field. So the security experts are obviously going to gravitate towards that part of the project. Whereas we also have a large number of companies that are participating on the non-technical aspects. Nice. This, uh, that sounds really cool. Do, do you think, uh, should we try? I mean, we haven't asked them, but should we try to see if we can just approach a couple of... Uh, I think so. I mean, I we just do have. I, it will be exciting to see what they're doing. Yeah. So they're working on um, hooking up Zephyr. So it, yeah. Let's did try I do right okay? here. 
you mind if I, I, I film for a second? Uh, just what you do? Do you want to say something about what's going on right here? With. What kind of thing did you do this week, for example? Okay. Do you want to talk yeah. about the demo? Yeah, Are you doing demo for Demo Friday, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, in just uh, one hour. Is it going to work? Yes. What is what is the demo about? Uh, I'll do the demo just before. We, we, so later. we do the demo based on uh, Masca. Masca is an uh, ARM subsystem uh, board. Yeah. Okay. It's based on um, V8M. For now, right. we're using TFM plus Zephyr to connect to the Google IoT Cloud. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. So this is uh, um, potentially the, the ones that could be uh, Cortex M23 or M33, right? Yes, it's, uh, with the uh, hardware security. Yes, yes. With the security extension. Yeah. Does this reference board uh, meant to demonstrate uh, the PSA yeah. uh, architecture and how you can use it to securely connect an endpoint device to the IoT Cloud? So is this some of the work you've been doing, uh, the security stuff that has to do with the uh, Zephyr? Yes, mostly we're trying to enable this part as through hardware and some reference software. And then Zephyr uh, will try to deploy it out there in the world to show the valid use case scenarios. And uh, yeah. Is it exciting to work on Zephyr? Is it a cool uh, project to be part of, right? Yeah, it's a very cool project. It's very cool. Is, uh, there's a lot of collaboration happening, it's happening very fast. And everything is happening out there in the open. It's an open source project, so every partner and everybody can adjust it to their needs without having to go through licensing. That's really cool. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll check your demo just after. So this is just some uh, example of uh, uh, right here, some of the stuff that's happening. And uh, um, uh, so next for you is uh, the, what do you say, the embedded? Yeah, so we'll be in Edinburgh um, late October. All right. So looking forward to that. E Edinburgh, right? Yes. In, in Scotland. Yes. yes. All right. October 21st to the 25th. Right.